Hi guys. Um, today I am going to tell you about my testimony, my Jesus testimony, how I came to Christ, how I was saved, and how I met him. My Jesus story started in the first and second grade. I did believe it. I did believe. I had teachers who used to teach me about Christ and read Bible stories to me. And it was at a time in South Africa where when you gathered like in the hall for assembly, you also could sing like Christian songs. And so that was when I first, I guess that was my foundation, but I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't go to church, maybe like one Sunday school my whole life. So, um, but I remember just having these visions about Jesus. And I remember like kind of visions, but kind of dreams at night. And I would lie down and close my eyes and I would just picture being on this brick wall, very narrow brick wall. I was walking and he was under me and he would be holding my hand and like guiding me along this wall. And I just find that amazing because, you know, we read stories. When we read stories like the three little pigs, we don't stay and suddenly have these visions about the three little pigs, you know, or Cinderella. It's like, and then for some reason, the gospel is alive. And it is true, and it does change your life. And that's what's just so amazing, you know, to just be so young and to hear these stories and to have visions and dreams about this man. Um, but I completely forgot about everything. It just shows how easy we forget. I, I didn't have Christian community. I didn't have parents who had Christian family. So I just kind of went off. And then my family also, there were some family problems, you know. Um, I suppose I grew up in a very secular family. They have, I don't want to divulge their personal issues today, I don't think, but um, that is part of my story. It's like the hurt and the scars. My mom had her own personal issues. My dad had his and together they had theirs. Um, and it really affected me. So I just started feeling depressed by age, like 11 or 12. I just started, I, when I see pictures of myself, sometimes I can just see like this blank negativity in my eyes. Um, so towards like 12, 13, I felt that and then I just rebelled. When I got to 13, 14, I rebelled, gave my parents so many gray hairs. I had my first sexual encounter at 14, far too young. But I'm kind of grateful in a way because it was a long-term relationship. We were together for three years. Um, so I kind of feel like there was some love to it. It wasn't as... Um, soul destroying as I think it could have been in another situation, but it's still too young to deal with that emotionally. Carried on partying. When we broke up, I carried on partying and drinking and drugging. I was dating a drug dealer by the age of 15 and just continued it. I studied. I mean, I, I always tried to be conscientious, conscientious academically. Um, and I did have parents who didn't neglect me and they gave me what I needed. But I think just the family dynamic kind of hurt me a lot. And then I studied, I saved some money, went to London back in 2005 and continued to just live this life. This, I just felt like it was a robotic, I didn't know at the time, but it just felt this robotic life of just working and eating and partying. And I continued partying and I continued the drinking and, and recreational drugs and, and, um, and men you know, and finding kind of my, my identity in, in how guys looked at me and how they liked me. And that's just not true. You know, my value is not found in that at all. So anyway, came back to South Africa, spent a few years in England, went to Costa Rica, had a heartbreak, real, that was like my biggest heartbreak. Um, I think that was the breaking point for me with relationships. I was, that didn't work out. I can tell you about all these stories, like, in detail if you're interested at another time but today i just want to do the the testimony of, of how i met christ um went back came back went back to london for a while and then went back to sa to south africa and um you know i had problems again like living with my mom and things were just not working out and i remember going back to like um, a guy that i really loved and I had left him before England. I came back five years later. We got back together, but it was, it wasn't right. I was not the right person to be in a relationship. I don't think he was either at the time. Just so lost, lost broken people like everybody. And um, I just remember hitting rock bottom really. 
I moved out, I moved into a small house share with like um, a girl and a guy and the girl one day invited me to an alpha call. So um, they do it in the Commonwealth, country, uh, Commonwealth countries. Nikki Gumbel is a man, a pastor who actually started it and it's basically just um, getting together during the weeknights, like once a week, you eat with the people that go to the course and you just learn about the gospel message, the Bible, and then you go away on like a Holy Spirit weekend. Um, it's really nice. And I, that's when I had my first God encounter. So I really, I remember like, I was 27 at the time. And it's interesting because statistically they say that most people are saved around that age, that 27. So I just made it and I'm so grateful. <laughs> but I think you can be saved at any age. God is always pursuing you, whether it's on your deathbed, whether it's when you're young, you know. Uh, so I went on the, the Holy Spirit weekend. And I was kind of like, th during the course, I was like, it was very refreshing. And I was like, yes, this is actually what I remember believing when I was very young. Um, but some of it was new because, you know, I hadn't grown up in the church. Um, went away and we had this service. And he was talking about, I remember the pastor talking about how, you know, God will never give you anything you don't want. You know, if, if we humans who are, who are evil give our children such good things and don't get me wrong i know people who are unbelievers are going to say humans are not evil we're not demons yes i know i know but humans are not inherently good and we are selfish and if people like that who like commit all these sins and gossip and drink and lie and cheat and you know really often don't treat people the way we we would like to be treated if we are so good to our children yet how good is God to us and I just remember hearing that and that's sticking with me and what he was talking about was also the Holy Spirit because you know in charismatic churches there's a lot of like drunken spirit people falling over and uh, this was actually Anglican but that doesn't matter it's not important God is God regardless of denomination um, and I remember him talking about that that verse he loves us so much he's not going to give us more than what we want and then suddenly my knees buckled and I nearly fell to the ground. And I remember standing there with crossed arms before that thinking, yeah, yeah, okay, like this is, I was kind of bored. Next minute my knees buckled and then I prayed and I just said, God, you said that you're not going to give me more than what I want. Please, I don't want to fall to the floor, I don't want to convulse, I don't want to do anything, but if you are real, please just come to me. And he did. And next minute I felt this rush of the most euphoric love I've ever felt in my whole life. Um, I was crying and I just have never experienced that, that euphoric, euphoric love. And I got prayed for, um, and I, I, I think that that actually is my salvation story, but I know that an encounter with the Holy Spirit doesn't always mean you're saved. People have encounters, um, they kind of believe, but they just carry on going on with their life. But that changed my life that day. I used to smoke cigarettes. My cigarette addiction stopped that moment that the Holy Spirit, that I received the Holy Spirit. Um, and then I went back home and all my friends were like, let's party, let's party. And, and I just said no. And they said, we knew you wouldn't want to party after you went to something like that. And I, I just said no. And then during that time, I had a lot of temptations because I was stuck in that time between this world and this life and then this newfound desire to just seek him and find out more about who this, this, this man is, who is God, who is Christ, who is this triune God. Um, and so I went back and I remember the one day just sitting in the bathroom and I, and I just said, um, Oh, sorry, I missed something. Actually, at the Alpha course, I opened up the Bible and I said, God, what do you want to tell me right now? And I said, I know who will follow. So that was one sign. <clears throat> um, went back home, sat on the bathroom floor, and I just said, Jesus, I need to know if you are real. If you are real. Like, I've felt this and I believe, but if you are real, just tell me now. And as I said now, a lizard, a little gecko in South Africa, we have these little geckos that crawl on the, the walls in, the, in, the, in our houses. He just fell. The gecko fell at my feet, as I said now. And, you know, to this day, it could have just been a coincidence, to be honest. But I don't think so. I just think that timing, and if this is a God who created 
heaven and earth, a God who sent plagues, he sent locusts. Why, how can he not just cause? Of course he can just drop one small visit at my feet to say, yes, I am real. And then after that, I started going to, just like a non-denominational church, and I was baptized. And that was when the temptations came so bad. Like, also, like, my flesh was, like, dying to do these things. and But my spirit was, like, like Jesus is king. It was difficult. But anyway, I continued to press in. And I would say, like I say, not everyone who has a Holy Spirit encounter is saved. But I, that was my salvation. Definitely. So, but I still went up again. The one day there was an altar call at the church. And I just wanted to make it, like, really definite and final. And... I was saved February 2010 then like February 2011 I was baptized yeah so I did the altar call first and then I was baptized and then I just continued to like grow in God Bible study worshiping um, I went on a mission trip when I came to Korea I just started reading unlocking the Bible reading the Bible just really pressing in and it completely changed my life my looks changed I mean now I'm getting older so whatever <laughs> but I was 27 at the time so you know it, I was still very young and um, my whole body changed I started looking so good I was like became so much more beautiful from the inside out you know Jesus is amazing and he is king he really really is and we do serve a triune God Father Son and Holy Spirit and each of them are so important yeah, and so I'm not going to go on like a whole preach. I just wanted to tell you about my story. So if this was encouraging to you in any way, please can you comment below. I also have an Instagram account. Um, it's, just, it's my name, Colette O'Halloran, so that's an Irish name. So you can find me on Instagram. Um, I'm so inspired by video and photography lately, and I feel like God wants me to like click into that creative side in order to show people His love. Because I think with evangelism, people are so often standing up on their pedestal and they shout and hate to people who are not like them or not like us. And we don't have to be that way. We don't always have to be like. And I've been, I've been guilty of it myself of just pushing people verbally with like who God is in the scripture. But sometimes we need to show. We need to show who God is with our creativity, with our love, with our small things that we do for them. And that's how we were created. We created image bearers. We're, we are created in the image of God and He is a creator and we actually are small creators. Obviously nowhere near to His extent. We are not God Almighty the Creator, but we are small creators. We are carpenters, you know, um, programmers, builders, photographers. We make things. We painters, paintings, we create. And um, yeah, so that's what I want to do now. I want to start videoing more, making YouTube videos and Instagram and yes. And I just, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear other people's testimonies um, down below. Please subscribe, comment because sometimes I do feel a little bit alone. There's so many people that grew up in the church. And then some people are really like saved Christians, loving God. Others are kind of like lukewarm or they're still on their journey. And I just want to meet more people who literally lived in the world, like completely secular life, and then bam, were saved. And then suddenly were like, let's live like the book of Acts. <laughs> Please let me know. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to hear your story. So yes, I'm going to go now. And our next video will be up next. Bye, God bless. Pour out your presence, speak to oh, I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender.